would like to thank especially Dr. Webb, who uh, volunteered to pick up the speaker at the airport and who actually recommended this event in the first place. I asked Dr. Webb a couple months ago if he had any ideas for good conservative union speakers, and he gave me Dr. Farrow as his first suggestion. Uh, Dr. Farrow is a Canadian academic who's a leader in the defense of traditional marriage in his country. He's project director for pluralism, religion, and public policy at McGill University. He's also a recent convert to Roman Catholicism. I decided to pick up a copy of his provocatively titled book, Making a Bastard, before this event, and I liked what I read. Dr. Farrow is a theologian whose approach to the issue of same-sex marriage is both relevant and persuasive, not just to religious believers, but also to the secular world. It's a great pleasure to have him at Wabash today. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Douglas Farrell for his talk, The New Definition of Marriage, Personal Liberty or Political Bondage. Well, thank you very much for the invitation, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm trying to remember when I was last in Indiana, and I know for a fact that I was here in 1980, but I can't remember. <laughs> here since. Um, so it is, a, it is a pleasure to come back, and uh, although I've never been to Wabash or to Crawfordsville before. Um, <coughs> Professor Webb was telling me that he also enjoyed what he had read of Nation of Bastards, but he hadn't read much. Um, <laughs> Certainly, uh, North America and much of the Western world is is in the midst of a debate about same-sex marriage, and uh, and so I think it, it is an appropriate uh, topic for us tonight. I, I notice on the mission statement of the Wabash Conservative Union that uh, it seeks to promote intellectual conservatism on the campus here uh, through thoughtful debate and civil discourse, and that following the best traditions of the conservative movement, the Phoenix will attack ideas, not people, and will do so with both honesty and integrity. Uh, certainly, I want to fit into the part about attacking ideas and not people. Um, uh, there are people I like to attack, but none of them are here. <laughs> I don't intend to bring them up. Um, uh, what we're dealing with here is a matter of ideas, but ideas do matter. And uh, so I hope that uh, whatever you present approach to this subject is uh, that you'll uh, bear with me and let me explain my ideas and then explain yours to me and we'll see if there can be some kind of meeting of minds, conservative or otherwise. I never have to confess, I never really think of myself as a conservative, although I'm sometimes described that way, um, uh, and perhaps I'll comment on that more later, but, uh, but let me um, proceed with my address tonight uh, straight away so that we can have new definition of marriage, personal liberty, or political bondage, question mark. On the 4th of November of this year, uh, uh, a headline and story comes from uh, an Associated Press writer from Curran, um, uh, from Portland, under the title, Name Dejection Fills Ballroom After Gay Marriage Vote. Julia Burnett and Anne Swanson had already set their wedding date when they joined about a thousand other gay marriage supporters for an election night party in a Holiday Inn ballroom. They hoped to celebrate a vote that would make it possible. Instead, they went home at midnight dejected and near tears after a failed bid to make Maine the first state to approve same-sex marriage at the ballot box. I'm ready to start trying. 58-year-old massage therapist walking out of the ballroom with Swanson at her side. I don't understand what the fear is, why people are so afraid of this change. Portland resident Sarah Holman said she was torn, but decided, 
Pfeiffer conservative upbringing to vote in favor of letting gays marry. They love and they have the right to love and you can't tell somebody how to love. End quote. Well, perhaps Curran intends with this story an allusion to Hunter Madsen and Marshall Kirk's 1990 book, After the Ball, How America Would Conquer Its Fear and Hatred of Gays in the 90s, a book which laid out the tactics for a revolution in public opinion. The proximate prize of the revolution at the moment is the most fundamental institution of civil society, the institution of marriage. When Governor Baldacci assigned, or signed a same-sex marriage into law in Maine on the 6th of May, he admitted, and I quote, in the past, I opposed gay marriage while supporting the idea of civil union. I have come to believe that this is a question of fairness and of equal protection under the law, and that a civil union is not equal to civil marriage. Article 1 in the main constitution states that, quote, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor be denied the equal protection of the law or be uh, denied the enjoyment of that person's civil rights or be discriminated against. This new law does not force any religion to recognize a marriage that falls outside of its beliefs. It does not require the church to perform any ceremony with which it disagrees. Instead, it reaffirms the separation of church and state. It guarantees that Maine citizens will be treated equally under Maine's civil marriage laws and that is the responsibility of government, end quote. Well, Holman and Baldacci supply us with the two main arguments for same-sex marriage. Personal liberty, you can't tell somebody how to love, and legal equality. These arguments were articulated quite clearly by the Goodridge Court in Massachusetts in 2003. I quote, from that judgment, barred access to the protections, benefits, and obligations of civil marriage. A person who enters into an intimate, exclusive union with another of the same sex is arbitrarily deprived of membership in one of our community's most rewarding and cherished institutions. That exclusion is incompatible with the constitutional principle of respect for individual autonomy and equality under law. Well, a quick historical tour before we join the group. Exactly 20 years ago, Denmark officially recognized same-sex unions in the form of registered partnerships. In 2001, the Netherlands became the first country to recognize same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriages were recognized then by Belgium in 2003. And in that same year, the Halpern Court in Ontario ordered them recognized, as did the Goodridge Court a few months later. By 2004, same-sex marriage was being practiced in Massachusetts. By 2005, it was available across Canada and in Spain. South Africa followed suit in 2006. Norway and Sweden in 2009. A Nepalese court has recently mandated same-sex marriage. Moves in this direction are also being considered or made in Latin and South America and Australia, for example. Here's the American picture. In the past two years, Connecticut, Iowa, and Vermont have followed the example of Massachusetts. New Hampshire is to have same-sex marriage next year in 2010, and New York is 